Hi all, today we are going to discuss about current commutated swapper. So why it is called as the current commutated swapper? Because in this case the commutation process of the main thyristor which I am representing by Tm is happening due to the current pulse that is generated by the commutation circuit. Here the commutation circuit includes the capacitor C, inductor L, D2, D1 and auxiliary thyristor. This entire circuit will be responsible for commutation of the main thyristor. We are going to see that whatever the current is passing through this LC circuit, that means this tank circuit, that current is responsible for turning off of the main thyristor. So that's why this is called as the current commutation. So exact detailed what will happen, how it is going to turn off that we are going to see in the coming sections. So before proceeding, I am assuming that my capacitor C is charged with top plate positive, bottom plate negative with a value of the supply voltage that is equal to Vs and the reference current direction for this IC I am taking as a downward current as the positive current for IC. Similar is the case for main thyristor I am taking as a T ITM and auxiliary thyristor ITA. And the current that is passing through your load that is always constant that is equal to I0 and the freewheeling diode I am taking as IFT. So here I am assuming that my load inductance is so much high due to which my load current will always remain I0 constant value irrespective of the circuit conditions. This is the first assumption I am taking. And here the RC is used. This is the resistor which is used for charging the capacitor. So the value of the RC will be generally very high. So while making the analysis we can neglect the effect of RC. That we can take this RC as not contributing for supplying any current to the load. Only it is used for charging or discharging of your capacitor that we are going to see in the coming sections. So let us start with the first one. So mode 1 at a time T is equal to T naught. So what I am doing, I am just triggering my main thyristor. So actually main thyristor if you see this side is anode, this side will be cathode. So you can see it is the supply positive terminal is connected to thyristor. And the negative terminal is connected through your load to your second side. That means your thyristor one is forward biased at this instant. So whenever it is fired, so it will start acting as a closer path. So now what will happen? The load current will start passing like this through your main thyristor one. It will pass through your load. That means the current passing through the thyristor one is equal to I naught at this instant. Here one more observation you have to make. The capacitor cannot discharge it through this one because the reason is there is no path for the current to pass. Because top plate is positive, so capacitor should discharge like this. But here you can see the diode D2 is in opposite direction. It will not allow the passage of current in this direction. And same way the capacitor can discharge to auxiliary thyristor if it is fired. But TA is not fired or not triggered. So that's why this is also off. That means the whatever voltage is there in the capacitor it will remain constant because of the diode D2 is reverse biased. Only load current will pass through your main thyristor. For a duration T is equal to T0 to T1. So now at the time T is equal to T1, so what will happen if I turn on or trigger my auxiliary thyristor? So whenever you close the auxiliary thyristor, what will happen? The capacitor will have one path for closing or the capacitor can discharge through this TA to L and return back. So same thing I am representing in the coming circuit. You can see when the auxiliary thyristor is turned on at T is equal to T1, it acts as a closed path. So one current IC is circulating in this loop and one current I0 is passing in the outer loop like this. In this manner it will pass. So this LC forms a tank circuit. We have already discussed in our previous lectures. If anyone have doubt about what is tank circuit and other things, you can please refer to my power electronics playlist in choppers. So there I have explained this tank circuit and how this equation came. I am directly writing the equation. The equation for the value of the current that is passing in this tank circuit that I can write as Vs divided by omega L because initially the voltage across this one is Vs omega L into sin omega naught T, where omega naught is a frequency that is given by 1 by root LC. It depends on the value of L and C and the time duration for which this complete one cycle because what will happen? The capacitor current will slowly, slowly it will increase, reach some peak value. After that, it will reach zero because you can see the current direction of the IC here is it is passing in opposite direction. So that I am showing in the waveform here. Here at time T is equal to T1, it will start conducting. So capacitor current will reach the maximum value. Then it will start decreasing again and reaches zero within the time equal to pi by omega naught. So during this time, what will happen? Because initially the top plate is positive, bottom plate is negative. Slowly as it is discharging, the voltage will reach zero by the time the current reaches peak. But now what happens? 
when this voltage becomes zero, the capacitor cannot stop conducting. The reason is the energy stored in the inductor will not allow the capacitor to stop conducting because inductor does not allow the change in current. So that's why it will continue the current in the same direction. So capacitor will start charging in the opposite direction. As the voltage of the capacitor is increasing in opposite direction, current will slowly, slowly, slowly decrease and reach zero. So same thing I have represented with voltage across the capacitor. You can see here the capacitor voltage initially it is at plus Vs. Slowly it is decreased to zero when the current reaches peak, slowly it goes to a negative value minus Vm by the time T2. That means by the time T2, so this whatever capacitor that is discharging through this one, so that will continuously circulate like this and it will reach the value of Vs. It will reach the value of Vs. By the time what will happen? Your capacitor current will become equal to zero. So when the capacitor current is equal to zero, then what will happen? The capacitor will try to because the bottom side plate will be positive, top side plate is negative. So now what will do? This capacitor will try to discharge it again because there is a closed path. But when the current start passing in the opposite direction, this will be opposite to the different direction of the thyristor because thyristor does not allow the current to pass in opposite direction. So because the current is becoming negative, this thyristor get reverse biased because bottom side plate is capacitor is positive, top side is negative. This reverse voltage is applied across this thyristor, auxiliary thyristor. So auxiliary thyristor will be turned off at the instant T is equal to T2. So when the auxiliary thyristor is turned off, how the circuit will look like? The circuit will look like this. The auxiliary thyristor is turned off here. So when the auxiliary thyristor is turned off, then what will happen? Because the bottom side plate is now charged to positive, this bottom side, this plus is connected to this D2. Because if you see here D2 in the circuit, D2, this is anode is lower side, cathode is on the top. So anode positive you are giving. So this will get forward by us. It will act as a closed switch. So now what will happen? Your current will continue to pass through this D2 and then through this main thyristor it will pass and return back. So the TM will allow the current in only one direction we know but actually the net current through the main thyristor will be one current is I0, another current is this IC. As long as this IC is less than I0 so it can pass through this because the current through the main thyristor will be I0 minus I see. As long as it is positive, it will allow to conduct. So that's why it will start circulating like this. Again, there is a circuit, tank circuit. L and C is there. So current will slowly increase and then it will decrease. So what will happen? The current will slowly start rising and then it will decay, ideally speaking. But now what happens? By the moment when this capacitor, whatever current is there, when it is rising, it will reach us the value that is equal to I0. You can see at this instant, the value of this current is reaching I0. So we know the current that is passing through the main thyristor will be equal to I0 minus IC. When both are equal, what will happen after that? The current passing through the main thyristor is passing in opposite direction. Will it allow the current in opposite direction? It will not allow. It will not allow. So as it will not allow it, then what will happen? It will goes to the off state because we are applying the reverse biasing here because current is zero trying to pass in a negative direction. So naturally it will be commutated here. So now what will happen? What is the path for this current to pass? The path for this current is because now this diode D1, this diode D1 get forward biased because now this voltage will apply across this. So this current will pass through the main diode. That means the circulating current can pass through the main diode. So how much current will pass? Because we, I already told you the load current remains I0 constant. So your capacitor current after this, you can see that it is rising and now the value is greater than I0. So out of this capacitor current, that means it will reach up to peak and decrease. So one part will go to your load. That means I0 will go to your load and the remaining part will pass through your diode. So that's why this upper part, this part I have represented here, this is the current that is passing through your diode. So let us assume starting from this instant after some angle theta 1, it is reaching this value of I0. Again, it will reach maximum and again it will reach here at an instant of if we are taking total as pi, this will be because 180 degrees minus theta. So at this instant that will come. So this duration, for this duration your diode will be conducting. So when the diode is conducting, what will happen? This side will be plus this side minus voltage will drop across this. So reverse voltage is applied across your main thyristor. So it will get completely commutated. That means it will turn off in this duration. It will completely turn off in this duration. I think up to here it is clear to you. So now what is happening when it is conducting through this? So that circuit I have represented here. So this current is circulating like this. It is passing like this. The main thyristor is off now. It is passing through your diode. So the current passing through this diode ID1, that ID1 is the difference of the current. That means the value of IC minus I0. One current I0 will pass like this. 
it will pass through your supply and come back to your capacitor one current will circulate like this through this path and return back to the capacitor that means through the diode d2 the total current will be ic through load i0 and through diode id1 so in that manner it will divide so this will continue in this manner so the same thing i am representing here so here you can see the current value ic so i see what is happening the ic is reaching the maximum and then it will start decaying so in the meantime what will happen if you see the voltage so what will happen by the time the current becomes zero the voltage across capacitor becomes opposite side vs so it will start discharging by the time it reaches the current peak the voltage will become zero so then it will start charging in the opposite direction why due to energy stored in the inductor so it is slowly 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 charging so by the time it reaches this value when the diode current is equal to zero or when it reaches i naught that means by this time the current reached i naught but i told you that load current cannot change it will remain i naught so now what will happen the ic will continue to maintain the value of i naught that means the current ic will be same as the i naught so current will not pass through this diode entire current will pass through your load with a constant magnitude of the current is equal to i naught so it is a constant magnitude of the current the voltage across the capacitor that voltage will charge linearly how long it will go it will go until this capacitor is charged to a value of vs little greater than the supply voltage whenever it is charged little greater than supply voltage in opposite direction so that circuit i am representing here let us go to this so the concept is like this the current is circulating like this through the capacitor through inductor d2 the current i naught is passing so whenever it is passing like this the capacitor is now charged to opposite polarity that means top side plus bottom side minus so your load voltage will be vs minus vc so the moment that vc is equal to vs what will be the output voltage output voltage is zero the moment this current crosses little bit that means the voltage across capacitor crosses little bit above vs your output voltage will be negative whenever output voltage is negative what will be the effect your freewheeling diode will be forward biased that means whenever your output voltage is negative this side is minus this side plus so freewheeling diode will be forward biased so what will happen the i naught will start passing through the freewheeling diode so actually ideally speaking what should happen entire current i naught should pass through the freewheeling diode because it is just like a short circuit in this path but what happened because of the inductor because inductor will not allow the sudden change in current so suddenly capacitor current cannot become zero so slowly the current will start decreasing that means whatever amount of current is supplied by capacitor it will slowly get decreased and some current will start passing through the freewheeling diode so same thing i am representing here here you can see the capacitor current after this instant will goes on decreasing at the same time what is happening the current passing through the freewheeling diode will goes on increasing so by the time period we reach t6 the freewheeling diode will conduct the full load current that means the value of i naught complete current i naught will pass through this and your capacitor current will become equal to zero so up to that instant your capacitor is charging so slowly your capacitor is charged up to this instant so after this incident what happens the value of the capacitor voltage is very high so i am just going back to the circuit again because in the circuit what is happening the top plate is positive this plate is negative so the voltage at your diode terminal at this terminal this is equal to vs minus vc so that means that becomes a negative whenever it becomes a negative what will happen to diode d2 that diode d2 will be reverse biased and also the current is reaching zero so diode d2 will stop conducting after this so same thing i am representing here now what will happen the diode d2 will stop conducting after this one so diode is open circuit complete i not is carried by your freewheeling diode complete i not is carried by your freewheeling diode so uh, that same thing i am representing here the freewheeling diode is carrying your complete ca current so now coming to the voltage that means voltage output voltage output voltage initially it is maintained as your supply voltage only but when the capacitor is completely charged in opposite direction by the time what will happen output voltage becomes zero or little bit negative that is maintained okay so now what is happening so this capacitor voltage is now greater than the supply voltage so whenever this voltage is greater than supply voltage now what will happen it will start discharging in this loop that means this i capacitor voltage will slowly discharge through vs through this rc and back so up to how long it will go on discharging it will go on discharging until the value of the capacitor voltage reaches equal to vs so same thing i am representing here vc will go on discharging slowly until it reaches the value of vs in this manner it will go so now coming to the voltage across the main thyristor voltage across the main thyristor what will happen whenever the diode is conducting d1 is conducting because d1 is conducting from t3 to t4 so for that duration this thyristor tm is 
reverse biased. So that I am representing by TC for this much duration, your main thyristor is reverse biased. So after that, what will happen? After that, because your capacitor will start conducting like this. So now your this thyristor will be connected one side to supply voltage, another side it is connected to second terminal. That means it will reach the value of Vs after that one. So slowly it will reach the value of Vs. So same thing is mentioned here. Okay. So same thing is the case for auxiliary thyristor. Auxiliary thyristor also, it will have the similar characteristic as the main thyristor. Only thing is there, because until the auxiliary thyristor is fired, up to that instant it is equal to Vs. And the remaining characteristic you can see, it is following nearly the same characteristic of the main thyristor, because it is following the same. Because this auxiliary thyristor across this, whatever voltage will be there, that voltage will be same as your voltage across your capacitor. So this is applied across these two terminals, it will follow that curve. Okay, so in this manner, this will operate. So why this is called as the current commutation? Because it is called as current commutation because whatever current is passing through this LC filter, that filter after it crossing the value of I0, that current what is happening? The current is bypassing through this diode D1. During that time, the voltage across diode D1 is opposite. That is reverse biasing your main thyristor and turning it off. Because as it is happening due to the current of the commutation circuit that is passing across your main thyristor. So that's why it is called as current commutation. I hope the process of current commutator chopper is completely clear to you. Uh, so next class we are going to see what are the different derivations or derivations of different formulas, important formulas that are required in the current commutator chopper. So if you still have any queries, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I will answer to your queries from there. Thank you. Thank you very much.